Spanning the globe with Christian programming and the Word of God 24 hours a day. This is the Gospel America Network. Broadcasting on the internet to every nation that Jesus is Lord. This is the Gospel America Network. The Gospel America Broadcast Network presents The Time to Turn A message from Father William Buckley Sharing the Word of God with every nation on the Gospel America Broadcast Network that Jesus is Lord Father William Buckley Speaking the Word of God Upholding the name of Jesus Welcome to the Time to Turn Good day to you This is Father Bill Buckley again Coming to you on our weekly broadcast The Time to Turn We began a series last week Called Reach Receiving authority. And uh, we're talking about Christian maturity, actually receiving authority is the first part of that. We're talking about Christian maturity, and I said to you, uh, as I spoke last week, that the church needs to get its act together because there's going to be a great ingathering of new believers, baby believers, desperate believers that are going to need to be nourished and encouraged and mothered and, and you know, nursed. And if Christians don't grow up, they're going to end up being swept up in this infant invasion in the church. And of course, when children get together, you know how children are when, they can, when, when they're uh, playing by themselves or when they're uh, in a situation where they're just uncomfortable, they can be rather, rather unpleasant. Well, if the church grows up so that every Christian can, can uh, disciple someone else and train them and, and encourage them, then there won't be an overload, but rather there'll be maturity. And so I'm going to talk to you today in more detail about Christian maturity. Maturity. 
I'm using Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16 as my text for this seven-part series. This is the second of the seven parts, and today we're going to be talking about receiving authority. The Apostle Paul says elsewhere, in actual, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 7 and 8, he says, Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ's own, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ's, even so we are Christ's. It's hard for us almost to imagine that in the early days of Paul's ministry, in the early days of the church, Paul, with all of his uh, authority and knowledge and, and demonstrated power, was still treated as by, by some as being an, an enemy or an alien. And in fact, the truth is that the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter were both betrayed in Rome uh, they were betrayed to the government as being part of an illegal religion. The Christian church for almost two, uh, for almost 300 years was, uh, was a, an unlawful Christian movement or unlawful religious movement, which was also considered a, a, an offense on the emperor, the emperor's religion. And so the result is the Christians and the Christian church was per, were persecuted terribly, you know, by the, by the thousands. And part of that persecution was the Jewish hostility towards the church as well, of which Paul, for a period of time, was the leader. He was literally the organizer and the administrator of the persecution campaign which the early Jews had against the Christians. And then he was dramatically and gloriously saved and became a powerful leader in the church. But he had enemies. He had people who were jealous of him and so on. And so at one point, he was betrayed to the authorities and was beheaded. We believe the Apostle Paul was beheaded and the Apostle Peter was, was, was uh, crucified, but he was crucified upside down. The normal cru procedure of crucifixion is, is head up uh, like Christ was. But, but Peter said, I, can't, I don't deserve to be crucified like my Lord, so I, I prefer. And so for three days, the apostle Peter evangelized while he was hanging on the cross, slowly dying. He was evangelizing people who came to look at him and mock him and uh, so on until he finally died uh, after three days on the cross. Paul was a man who had come to know authority. He, came, he knew authority from his Jewish tradition, but he came to know authority in the Christian tradition, which we're going to be talking about. And he says in this chapter, which I just read to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7, verse 8 says, For even if I should boast somewhat about, uh, about our authority, which Christ gave me, for building up and not for tearing down, I shall not be ashamed. Paul says he had been given authority for the purpose of building up, not for tearing down. And that should bring me to the point of, of, of giving you a definition. The word authority in the Greek really refers to power and the right to use it. The power to do or to accomplish and the right to exercise that power. That's what authority is. Power in itself is not, uh, is not um, authority. Satan does not have authority. He has power. It's interesting, Jesus says about Satan, when, um, when the disciples came back from their, great, their, their mission ministry, and they came back, they were all happy. They said, you know, Lord, even that demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. For I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And I have given you, listen, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing you you will step on uh, scorpions and serpents and nothing shall by any means hurt you jesus gave authority this was before the crucifixion before his resurrection he gave his leaders authority 
and it was in his authority, his power, and his assigned right to use it. That was the basis of the apostles' ministry before, and even more so after he left and ascended to the, to, to the heaven. Authority is power and the right to use it because it is received from the source, the ultimate source of authority, who is God. Now, in this text, Ephesians chapter 4, we read it says this, And he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. First place, I want to tell you something about true authority. True authority cannot be seized. True authority cannot be bought. True authority cannot be, be uh, connived for. True authority is from God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, he said, all authority, the King James says power, but the Greek says all authority, and it is the, it is the different word from power, and, and authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All true authority comes from the hand of Jesus. It doesn't matter where it is or how it is administered. True authority of a husband in his home. True authority of a teacher in teaching. True authority of a policeman. True authority of a politician. True authority of a priest or minister. True authority comes directly from the hand of Jesus. And so all authority is ultimately accountable to Jesus. I know that doesn't sound like what people in this American society, where we can talk about separation of church and state, which in, aside for, for the moment is a false teaching. It's not, it's not in our Constitution. It's, not, it's a false uh, addition recently uh, generated because of people's desire to get away from the Constitution. But the fact of the matter is, all authority, wherever, all, wherever legitimate authority is found, comes from the Lord Jesus power and the right to use it, Jesus gives. In this verse, he says, and he himself gave some. Now, it's very interesting. I'm using the new, the, the new King James Version, and the new King James Version reflects much the old King James, and sometimes the old King James, as, as, as difficult as at times it is to read, it brings out the, the Greek a little better than some of the other versions do, the modern versions. And this says, and he himself. Now, in Greek, you can say things and then you can emphasize things. So, for example, Jesus said that uh, he himself would be the healer. In 1 Peter chapter 2, we, we, uh, we, we learned where uh, he himself became the the he himself is an emphasis of he, meaning that he alone is the one to do whatever the verb says. He alone is the one who heals. He alone is the one who, who, who delivers. He alone is the one who blesses. And in this, he continues to offer you, the scripture says, the wealth of the wicked is st stored up or laid up for the righteous. And you have every right to ask, answer his question. Is there something that you need or want? Tell him that. And she did, and, and he quickly answered her re request. God is a giving God. But let me tell you something about his giving. He never gives with force. What I mean by that is he never forces his blessing or his way on you. He always leaves opportunity for you to decide whether or not you will seek and receive or not. He urges us to seek. Ask, seek, knock, Jesus says. And the door will be opened. And the blessings will come. So the first thing I want you to know about Christian maturity, a Christian who is maturing and a Christian who is mature understands authority, understands that the power to do and to accomplish whatever they do in their life 
There's not, a, there's not a thing in your life, small or great, that you cannot go to the Lord and ask Him for help to accomplish. Oh, I could, I could tell you stories how the Lord helped me to do mechanical things and, and uh, so on like that. Years ago, I put a timing chain in the front of a big old eight-cylinder eight uh, Mercury that, that we had. A timing chain. I had to pull the front off the, 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 uh, uh, the thing. H how I did it, I still don't know to this day, but I did. And I replaced the, the water pump that had uh, gotten in the way and the timing chain and, and got, the, got the old bomb back on the road. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that his power cannot bless if you will go to him in a submitted heart, recognizing that it's from him that it comes. Boasting of yourself is foolish. But blessing him is wisdom. So our text says, and he himself gave. He gave liberally. Years ago, one of my sons had juvenile leukemia. And I did everything I knew to do. I prayed for him and I anointed him and I gave him communion and I rebuked everything I could think of. And finally, he was just going downhill badly. And uh, the Lord said to me, when I was praying for him one morning, will you give your son to me? Will you give your son to me? And I thought about that for a minute and I thought, well, Michael's gonna die. So I sat up, I, I was lying on the floor in of my office at the time praying and I sat up against the wall and I said, Lord, look, Michael was yours before he was mine. And if you wanna take him, that's your business. But I wanna tell you three things. And I said, just like I'm talking to you, I just talk right out to the Lord. I'm going to tell you three things. First place, I'm not changing my ministry. I believe you're the healing and delivering God. And if you don't heal and deliver uh, Michael, whatever his problem is, after everything I've done and know to do, if you don't, that's your business. But I'm not changing my ministry. Secondly, I said, I'm going to preach a salvation sermon over his casket. And thirdly, if somebody comes to me and says, well, pastor, why wasn't Michael healed? I'm going to refer them to you. I'm not going to make any excuses. And then the Lord showed me how to pray for Michael, told me how to pray for him. And the Lord said this, if Michael will agree with you, take authority over the spirit of death and the spirit of leukemia, juvenile leukemia, bind them, command them out, anoint him and he'll be healed. So after church that Sunday, I sat down with him and his older brother and we went over scriptures. And then I said to him, Michael, the Lord has shown me how to pray for you. If you'll agree with daddy. Well, Michael was a little kid at the time and he hadn't eaten anything solid for over three weeks. And he was down to, I mean, he was down to a rag, uh, a rag doll uh, condition. And I can hear him today when he whispered, whatever you say, dad, I'll agree. Whatever you say, Dad, I'll agree. So with that, I took authority of the spirit of death. I bound it. And then the spirit of in juvenile leukemia. I bound it and I, took, I, and I said in Jesus' name, I take authority of it. I buy you. I command, get out in the name of Jesus. And he began to just erupt, just little eruptions for I don't know how long. It wasn't long. And then when he stopped, I anointed him with oil. I command the healing of the Lord upon him. And... He was quiet. He went in the other room, sat, uh, sat, sat on the couch, fell asleep, waked up a couple hours later. All the signs of his advanced juvenile uh, leukemia was gone. His appetite was back. He ate three plates of food. He hadn't eaten anything solid for three weeks, and he ate three plates of food and held it down, and, and God worked. But the interesting thing is, the Lord showed me later, Michael was only six at the time, but he was, he was, he was a born again, water baptized and spirit baptized. And yes, tongues talking little boy, but he was in God's eyes, a responsible believer and a responsible believer can't be forced even to receive a blessing from God. And that's what the Lord said, if he will agree with you, let me remind you, God gives, but he never forces. He makes available his grace. That's why it's not only stupid, but it's insulting when people say, God this and that. God didn't do this. God did. My friend, I want to tell you something. The only reason you didn't get from God 
what you want is you didn't either know how to ask or you weren't ready to receive it. And I want to tell you something. We can ask ahead of our readiness. We can ask for more than we're ready to hold, ready to manage. The Lord knows that many times success will ruin a believer. You look at many of the, not so much today, <coughs> not so much today, but in the days gone by, many of the pop singers, the popular singers, they were former choir uh, members singing from their church experience and then they went into the world and that was about the end of their spirituality. They weren't mature enough to handle the blessings that would come in their worldly exposure. And many times God doesn't answer prayers because he knows we're not ready to manage what we want. But he's ready to give, nevertheless, liberally. Now notice, I want to quickly say to you, notice the authority. The authority that is listed here is five different offices. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. These are sometimes what we call the five administrative offices of authority in the church. And each one has a, an important role relating to an, an apostle is sort of like the, 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 the general uh, in the situation. The prophet is one who has been gifted by God to hear and to speak God's voice in the situation, to speak from God. The, the pastor, uh, excuse me, the, um, the prophet, the evangelist is one who has been anointed for the purpose of powerful ministry of evangelism. That is breaking new ground, entering new territory, taking back territory that has been lost uh, from the Christian church. An evangelist is one who, pre who preaches good news, but the preaching of good news in the New Testament, and it should be today, should always be confirmed with the signs of authority following. Unfortunately, there's a lot of talk about these titles, but if you look closely sometimes, the people who claim to have these titles don't have the signs that they should have confirming their calling. Evangelist, pastor. Pastor's job is sort of like a father. He's sort of like a father of the flock. He's, he's like dad to the local church. And it's, and it's so important. And finally, teacher. A teacher is one who communicates truth in an orderly way. These are vital offices of authority. And if you, are, if you want to be a mature Christian, you need to seek to find a place where the offices of authority are functioning and get yourself lined up with it and submitted to it and then grow yourself. Because the whole point of growing is that you grow up into leadership. You don't just sit there and say, well, you know, it's wonderful. Well, they had great service. We had a great service today. And, you know. But wait a minute. If you had a great service today, what are you going to do with the great message and the great blessing that you receive? You're going to give it to, to others if you are doing what is right. Let me say to you again, Christian, authority, Christian maturity begins with the understanding, the submission to, and then the exercise of, of power and the right to use it given to us by the one from whom, to whom all authority has been given, our Lord Jesus. You need to look at yourself and you need to answer where you are under authority. I say, like I was saying to you before, if a person says that they, uh, if, if a person gets sick and I ask them, where, where would you go for anointing? Most of the time they don't know. But you know, it's not, you, you can't call a John Hagee. You can't call Billy Graham. You can't call Benny Hinn. You don't have to because these offices and the functions of these offices are for the local church. And a local church that is moving in the spirit of God will progressively mature the people into and then seek the offices for them. Seek from God the offices so that they are able, they're able to do that. Now, I want to close today by saying to you, what is your attitude towards authority? 
If you're a rebellious type, if you're an independent type, you need to ask God to forgive you and you need to say, Lord, guide me so that I can be a person under authority. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next week as we continue our study on Christian maturity. This is your announcer hoping this broadcast was a blessing to you. And if you'd like to write to Father Bill Buckley, you can do so by writing to The Time to Turn in care of The Church of the Resurrection, 1110 William Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06608. That address again is The Time to Turn in care of The Church of the Resurrection, 1110 William Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06608. Write to us, and we'll be glad to hear from you, and of course, we will respond. Remember us in your prayers. And thanks for watching The Time to Turn on the Gospel America Broadcast Network and this station. We'd like to offer you the opportunity to help us with our ministry. For a donation of $10 or more, we will send you this book, a powerful book, describing the credibility, the deep credibility of our Christian faith and the ministry of Christ. Today there's so much suspicion, doubt, and, and, and abandonment of the scriptural truths and the historical facts concerning the scripture. But Lee Strobel, the author of this, The Case for Christ, gives a, a presentation that is beyond comparison of most Christian defenses of the scriptures. It's a marvelous book, and for $10, if you'll send it to the, turn, the Time to Turn, 1110 William Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06608, we'll send you a copy of this book, The Case for Christ. Let me tell you, it's worth every penny that you would donate. For a minimum of $10, we'll send it to you. We invite you to help us with our ministry. Thank you so much.